Nestled deep inside horse country between Louisville and Lexington, along the Kentucky River, sits the oldest continually operating bourbon distillery in America. Right in Frankfort, Kentucky, we're making some of the world's best spirits and you can be enjoyed around the world. And we're making it with about 440 local people. Here in Frankfort, the capital city of the Commonwealth, Buffalo Trace Distillery has been making bourbon for more than two centuries. Through a timeless dedication by a lineage of proud craftsmen, Buffalo Trace Distillery has earned its place among the legendary spirits makers of the world. Prior to being renamed the Buffalo Trace Distillery in 1999, it was known by several names historically, including most notably the George T. Stagg Distillery and the OFC Distillery. The relationship between the workers and the distillery is deeply personal. The distillery's always been a very important part of this community. Most everybody's family, at one point or another, someone's had somebody work here. Just as the movement of whiskey is a vital process in the aging process, so is the passing of the torch at Buffalo Trace among family members from one generation to the next. One such employee whose family history is inextricably blended with the storied history of the distillery is Freddie Johnson. A third generation employee of Buffalo Trace, Johnson's introduction to bourbon began with his grandfather, a 52-year employee under Colonel Blanton, and extended to his father, who had a 47-year run with the late Elmer T. Lee. I currently get a chance to work with members of uh, the distillery that their fathers worked with my dad, and their grandfather worked with my grandfather. Today, Johnson is one of the most popular tour guides at Buffalo Trace sharing his expansive personal and institutional knowledge with tourists from around the globe. There's some, uh, some bourbon that's getting ready to get released, and I'm looking for some of it. Um, it'll be some of the last barrels of bourbon that Elmer and my dad got a chance to handle at this distillery. Since 1999, bourbon production in Kentucky has increased more than 170 percent, with premium small batch and single barrel brands driving the bourbon renaissance. When, when we come out with a new product, people in California know about it in an hour, uh, for example. So I think people are, are appreciating the amount of effort and quality that goes into making a good bourbon. And when they go out and spend their hard-earned dollars, they want something with a story, and they want something that's authentic, and something that they're willing to spend their money on. In 2013, Buffalo Trace Distillery added its highest distinction to date, being designated a National Historic Landmark. There's only a handful that are fully functional operational National Historic Landmarks. Uh, and for Buffalo Trace to be one of those is really pretty cool. Most locations is either a building or a monument. This is a living and breathing National Historic Landmark. We want to be able to be consistent with the bourbons that we make, but we don't think that that's where it's going to end up. We think that the perfect bourbon has not yet been made. From the old Taylor House, erected in 1792, to the 1883 rebuilding of the Dickel Building, to the 1886 introduction of a steam heating system for the warehouses, Buffalo Trace's unrelenting desire to innovate drives their endless pursuit of attaining the holy grail of bourbons. 
They were the first distillery to introduce climate-controlled warehouses. So what we actually do in the winter months is we close all the windows. We've learned that whiskey aging in a barrel when the temperature reaches 45 degrees or cooler goes dormant. Might as well have it in a glass jar. So we're gonna close the windows, we're gonna crank up the steam heat, and we have barrels with thermometers in it. And in 1953, also celebrated their two millionth barrel by building the world's only single barrel warehouse. 31 years later, the distillery introduced Blanton's, the world's first single barrel bourbon. In December 2013, Warehouse X became the first new building constructed on the distillery property in more than 60 years. Constructed of four independent barrel chambers, Warehouse X is designed to explore the limits of environment influences on the quality of bourbon. It allows for experimentation into variables such as temperature, humidity, airflow, sunlight, and more. Every detail matters here from where an oak tree is planted to where the corn comes from. Crafting bourbon is part art form, part science. No matter the era or the age, the motivation and goal remain the same. And at Buffalo Trace, this pioneering spirit is forever linked to the journey toward crafting the authoritative ideal bourbon. You know, scotch was considered the premier product uh, in the world. And if you think about it now, uh, we've got some bourbon at Buffalo Trace Distillery that's sitting right up as some of the top three whiskeys of the world. All the while honoring tradition and embracing change. said that a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. At Buffalo Trace, that indelible initial step dates back to Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr., a descendant of two U.S. presidents, James Madison and Zachary Taylor. Known as the founding father of the bourbon industry, Colonel Taylor forever unified the classic and modern eras of bourbon making. Well, definitely, the biggest learning for me as Taylor is the fact that he focused on quality also. And uh, we haven't changed that philosophy at this distillery ever since he left. Among his artisan innovations to the craft were copper fermentation tanks, state-of-the-art grain equipment, column stills, modernized buildings, a more efficient sour mash technique, and a first-of-its-kind steam heating system still used in the warehouses today. Making bourbon requires time, fortitude, and patience. I'd say that's probably the number one competency that people should have uh, when making a good bourbon because the few things we've learned, you can't cheat uh, Mother Nature and you can't cheat Father Time. It takes years to see just how a hunch, an idea, and a science experiment will evolve and ultimately how it will taste. Often, a younger generation sips what a previous one crafted. It is very, very rare that any person ever gets a chance to sample their third batch to its final maturity. That's the legacy you leave for the next generation. The DNA footprint of innovation remains at the forefront of Buffalo Trace's success. We have an experimental team of people uh, and we, we get together every six months and talk about uh, projects and things that we'd like to get accomplished. And then from that, we're able to uh, create plans throughout the year on research and development on new products, different Everything from different recipes to different distillation techniques. Uh, we focus a lot on wood, but the one thing is kind of a common thing in our experiments 
are we are focused on traditional methods. Today, experimentation with recipes, aging, barrel treatments, and the environment starts and ends with the master distiller Harlan Wheatley. To be a master distiller at Buffalo Trace, it means that you spent time in the distillery and distilling, and you spent enough time to master it. In other words, uh, you've trained and learned under people before you. For me personally, it's been a fun ride to be able to uh, get support from the distillery and ownership and be able to explore basically anything we want. Wheatley is only the sixth master distiller at Buffalo Trace since the Civil War. The guy he replaced dated back to Prohibition. All the master distillers since the Civil War at Buffalo Trace have come in with a science degree or background and then they uh, train under the distiller before them, which I did. A native Kentuckian with a formal education in chemistry and chemical engineering, the fearless journey for Wheatley is driven by each step closer toward the perfect bourbon. So I was very, very fortunate to be able to work with Elmer T. Lee and Gary Gayhart and combined experience between the two I had over 100 years experience. Today, there are nearly 5.7 million barrels of bourbon aging in Kentucky. That's more than the state's population. Offering the natural perfect mix of vast deposits of limestone and a favorable climate, Kentucky proved ideally conducive to producing bourbon. 95% of the world's supply of bourbon is crafted in Kentucky. Where does the other 5% come from? unabashedly proclaims Steve Bashir, the popular former governor of Kentucky. It's counterfeit. Leave no doubt about it. In the hearts and minds of Kentuckians, bourbon is uniquely and authentically a Kentucky spirit. Rest assured, there is no wrong way to drink bourbon. Take a shot neat, because that's the way the distiller put it in the bottle. Or add a splash of water or an ice cube to see if it blooms and opens up on your palate. Or mix it in a cocktail. In the end, it's all about enjoying Buffalo Trace. Hey!